been busy working all night And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right They know what I'm living like I've been busy going all out And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right Morning everybody! Almost 1 p.m. on another beautiful sunny day in Vegas, although we got some serious winds which could uh, affect the algae thing. But I heard of a new product called Flonase. If you got the, the runs, Flonase is your thing. And they're not paying me to say that, but they probably should, right? Because all you guys are going to buy it now. Uh, super excited. Having a blast. Day 5 World Series of Poker. Finally, finally, one of the, the first 10K Omaha 8 or better tournament of the day. Um, starts at 3 o'clock. I got a couple hours, so... Uh, I'm getting pasty, you know. I'm typically a guy who, who you know, who's, who's dark and bronzed, if you will. But uh, sitting in those Rio poker rooms makes you white and pasty. Uh, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of a base color for the series whenever I get an opportunity to. Uh, there is a soccer game. I do have a soccer game tonight, but I won't be playing because we've got Omaha eight, and that's not gonna end till. We start at 3 o'clock, it'll be done at 2 a.m. We'll get home till 3. So the plan right now is to chill, maybe lay in the pool for a little bit, have uh, outdoor brekkie. I know, right? 1 p.m. breakfast. It's so weird, right? It's like, what if poker players are a strange brew? I don't know. So anyways, guys, I hope you're having fun with this because I'm having a blast. So, so excited for today. Um, so let's see how it rolls out. My intention, we'll let you know in a minute because I haven't taken a look. Oh, wait a minute. I think I did. I think my intention is we start with 50,000 in chips. I'd like to end the day. My intention to end the day would be to have 200,000 in chips, which is pretty hefty. It's a pretty good uh, start to the tournament. 200 would do the trick. So, yeah, that's the plan. Game of Thrones seasons coming soon. Check those pillows out. Thanks, Stapes. What are we making, honey? We're making waffles. All right, vegan waffles. Yum. Put some berries and whatnot in there. Chef boy R. Marissa. Yum. Okay, you did. I'm gonna put you on camera. Ah! <laughs> You're a jerk. I know. Mm. Protein waffles, yummy. Is there protein powder in those? Yep. Yummy, yummy. And the pancakes, too. They're waffles, honey. Whatever, same thing. Where's the forks and knives? Come on, what the hell is this place? I'm getting it. That's what's up. So what's the plan? Syrup and almond butter? Is that what we're doing? That's and blueberries. Blueberry jam? Oh, yeah. So should you just put it all on or what? Well, the whole deal? whatever you want. Put whatever Well, how you are you want. making yours? The blueberries and syrup. I want the same. Put some juice on here. Mmm. Just pour the syrup right on. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Forget protein shakes. Let's do protein pancakes. That's what's up. Okay. Now for the. <laughs> now for the, you know, the moment of truth right here. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> good job, man. Thanks, babe. How's it going, man? Yeah. Oh. I haven't seen you in such a long time. How you doing, buddy? I'm filming, making vlogs. Yeah. You're gonna be so famous. It's crazy. <laughs> hey. Okay. Who's the little puppy? Yeah. See this little puppy? Yeah. Huh. It's my new dog. Aww. Look at him. Look at that guy. <laughs> Are you cutie? Can he walk? Yeah. Let me see you walk, little bugger. Jedi, come here, buddy. Come here, Jedi. Jedi. Look Jedi. <laughs> he thinks it's grass. He's going to pee all over the place. That's cool. It's been a while since we had a dog pee in this house. Hey, Chloe. How you doing? Oh, she's shy. She's running away. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. Cute. Oh, it makes you miss Mushy, right? I know. 
Okay, so not gonna lie, uh, seeing that little puppy come over, you know, reminded me of my little guy Mushu, who I lost. I had him for 17 years. He had a big personality, a big bite, but he like he was like a little more like a cat in that way, where he kind of had to earn his love. And we went through a lot together. You know, 17 years he's been around with me. I used to take him with me on the road, and every time when I stopped doing that, like I would put my suitcase together, he would jump in it, and uh, you know, because he thought he wanted he wanted to come with me. So just a lot of memories, and maybe think about you know getting another dog. Also, I watched that movie, A Dog's Purpose, which really inspired me to get another talk, just in case, like, Mushu reincarnates is another one. Cute story, anyway. Cheesy, cute, but really cute movie if you haven't seen it, A Dog's Purpose, one to watch. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking the worst time to get a dog would be right now, because I'm not really even available. You know, I'm not available around the house, I'm not available to, to you know, train a dog, and you know, you want to give a dog, especially in the first six months of its life, a lot of love. So with the poker player schedule, uh, during the World Series, especially mine, it's not ideal. So, thinking maybe after the World Series of Poker, we I'm getting a lot of pressure though to get a dog. It's like that dog in my face. I got. I can't show you how many like doggy pictures were sent to me yesterday. Look at this. It's unbelievable. Like, hang on, I'm gonna show you right now. We're at a stoplight. I'm okay. I'm not trying. Look at all these things. Look at all these little doggy pictures, like cute doggy pictures. It's like hint, hint. I know. I get it. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get a doggy soon. Um, so anyway, it was fun to have the kids over. I really liked those two kids. Uh, they're like, I don't have any, I don't think, kids. I mean, it's possible because I've had sex before. <laughs> but uh, those would be the closest things to my kids right now. They come over, they're having a pool day, which is a nice, beautiful day out here. And that's kind of what the house was designed for, to have parties and fun. So even when I'm not there, it warms my heart to know that the house is being used for that. Um, today though, we got to get back on focus track. We're here to work. 10K, Omaha 8 or better. So, intention for the day, end the day with 200,000 in ships. Put us in really good shape. On top of that, a couple mental notes. You know, actually, a kid named James Obst. Uh, really good, smart kid from Australia. I watched one of his videos on Omaha 8, and I remember watching it, and I told him this too. I said, I agreed with everything he said, except for one specific hand, and I talked to him about it, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, good point. But uh, he, he really, you know, he made a couple key points that just were reinforced, like, yeah. The big difference between nine-handed and six-handed in Omaha 8. There's just a big difference. So in Omaha 8 or better, you got to have an ace. You basically, I would say, over 90%, 95% of the hands you're going to play uh, outside of the big blind should con are going to contain an ace. So now with more players being dealt in, right, there's you know nine-handed versus six-handed. That's an extra 12 cards that you know, an ace is likely to be in someone's hand. So when someone has an ace and then they catch, they have like a deuce with it or a three with it, uh, they're much more likely to play. So when you're in early position, especially if you don't have no ace, you know, you probably shouldn't be limping or raising. Um, and even if you have some worse aces, like ace three, jack seven, you know, stuff like that, you don't, you don't have to play from early position. It's a lot different than six handed. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a mental note of those first three positions playing a little more snug and also doing a little bit of limping from that spot especially with hands that do uh like well one way so let's say for example i get ace king king jack you know a lot of people think oh that's a raise well you know what i don't really i'm just gonna limp because if it doesn't come a high board i'm gonna be check folding on the flop anyways so i'm gonna do a little bit of limping not too much until like maybe a little like later in the tournament it's just too valuable to raise because people play even more snug they're on shorter stacks um but overall, I'm just gonna focus on you know doing what I do, which is to you know play cautiously in marginal spots, play like you know sort of a tournament adjusted version of Omaha High Low, and um, you know later in the tournament when we have that big stack of chips, really kind of open up and abuse and start like for example in late position if I get King Queen Four Five Double Suited, it's not a very good hand, but once I get a big stack, that might be a hand we add to the repertoire in terms of a steal. Uh, the other thing I do, probably do a little different than what's considered optimal is big blind defense. Um, you know, a lot of cash game players, you'll see, they defend their big blind like almost every time, like 100% basically, or pretty close, with all kinds of trash. I'm not gonna do that in the tournament. I'm gonna look for, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give up some equity in those spots for higher, um, you know, uh, higher return situations where I'm not at risk with making really tough decisions where I'm like, oh my God, I have like seven, four for low and queens and sixes for high. Like, I don't I don't really wanna have to make 
these tough decisions, especially if there's more than one player. I'm more apt to call against one because four random cards will do a lot better against just one opponent than it will if you have a raise and a call. If you've got a raise and a call and you've got a junkie hand, you're in real bad shape. So um, I'm gonna play a little tighter than probably most people out of the blind, or at least most of the good players. Play a little tighter from early position and uh, cautiously, I'm gonna sound like a total freaking nit. Play like, I'm just gonna play like a nit. No, I got some gears and I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna do a lot of three betting blah 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 so super excited anyway i mean like i said the world series of poker this is the first championship event for me the one drop is whatever it's a lot of money but it doesn't have any sort of appeal to me there's no shot clock it's kind of freaking boring um as you guys saw if you watched it's like you know people tanking for two three minutes it's like get me a gun <laughs> i'm gonna shoot something maybe not them because that's not appropriate but just like something shoot a pop can off the freaking fence or something because it really it's, it's just too stressful and annoying so anyways guys it's uh what is it 2.30 right now. We're going to be there for right around 3 o'clock. I'm starting fresh, starting on time. Feeling good. Let's get it. Too many thoughts on my mind. I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. Yeah, R Richard says go GFY. GFY? He, he learned in the lingo. Something like that. I love it. Or G T F O or Something, yeah. G F Y. G F Y is good though. Just hashtag G F Y. Showers. Talking about the shit they've been talking about. Telling me I should do this. Telling me I should do that. Telling me, telling me things about rap. Talking the truth and that's stabbing my back. It will knock me off track. No, no. Too many things have been built and been hard to do. I'm here to check on you. Yeah. Good luck, man. All right. Good luck, dude. No, he's alive. This guy? Yeah. He's got credentials. I'm not sure that guy even works here. He told me about that just now. Last hand. Very counseling. As long as I win the tournament, you can call me whatever you want. Everything I'm working on, every night another song, they be quiet all alone. They gon' notice when I'm gone. We got me a juicy table. Have Brandon Shack sit down. He's on the fantasy team. So he's good. But otherwise, it's amazing for a 10k Omaha hater better the table that I drew. Just like a lot of really casual players. So playing pretty snug. Got sort of 50,000. I've got like 66, 67. So great. Great first like two hours. Not put myself in any bad spots. All the things I talked about on the ride over, I'm doing. So, so far, so good. If I can figure out how to open this shit. Let's go old fashioned with the teeth. Looking back down on the people below. I've been keeping real, I've been doing. Five, twelve, we've got three minutes. You gotta time these breaks, Will. You only get 15 minutes on the nighttime tournaments. They start at three and end at uh, two. No dinner break whatsoever, so that requires like making the most out of the breaks. Grab a salad, had me a little wrap. Um, one of the future breaks, I'm probably going to have to put together some kind of a meal. Otherwise, I'm going to waste away. <laughs> Look who's there. Hi. How are you doing, Bill? Uh, 14 left, but I just made a bad play. How much did you got? Uh, 1.7. Okay. Thanks, Nina. Derek over here? Yeah, right here, right here. Right here. Alright, it's starting to look like a team table. That's Horsey Brock Parker right there. Say what's up, Brock. What's up? And then we got Brandon Shaq Harris. Hey Brandon, say hello to the people. Up, this is Team McGrath with action. Yeah. The three of us, crushing. We're Bring doing so good. We have to get a tag team in there, huh? For tomorrow, there's a 1K. <laughs>
happy to be happy to be on the spot. Couldn't ask for a better uh, sticky later. What's going on, Eric? So we got chips over there. We got we got double average. Okay. I think I think double average with like three ways. No, you're doing good. You stay in it. Hey, she's an all star also in the rotation. Yeah, we're doing good. So you got 130,000. Making moves. Yeah. Are, you, are we in the money yet? No, like three away from the money. I said that. Okay, sorry. Remember, like yeah. two seconds ago. Ah, yeah, but we weren't on camera then. No, we were. Killing I said me it right on now. <laughs> okay, fine. So yeah, so you're how many left? <laughs> I don't know. I think like 38. Okay, well, we'll go see. play good. Yeah. What's the average stack? Uh, I'm not sure. Like half whatever I have. Half of what you have? I think so. so I, th I have 100. So you're doing good. I think average is like 65. All right, go get him. Yeah, we got him. Focus. Okay, so we're working on a good start. Uh, six levels in, we got four more to go. I was up to about 90, 88, 90,000 from my 50K stack. Lost a few pots back and I'm sitting on 60, but making really good decisions. Really good laydowns, not burning a chip. So I've got every chip I'm supposed to have. And uh, the truth is I'm a, I hit a, I'm a little bit tired, not like crazy tired, but you know, every day is grueling. So I'm gonna put some of the, my special sauce. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm gonna put some of my special sauce in uh, in here. It's called like a it's Vega Sport pre-workout energizer thing. Totally caffeine free. Got some sort of ginseng root and whatnot. Gives me a little boost of energy. It did work last night. So I'm gonna take a hit of that and head back in there in the last four hours and run it up. All right, this is stuff I was telling you about. One little hit of this stuff. Oh yeah, it's only got five calories too, which is pretty good. Stick that in there, be good to go. Pretty good all day yesterday, most of the start of day two, and basically had like 140,000 chips, and the limits got pretty big. I think starting around like three and six thousand limits, four and eight thousand limits, I just literally did not win one single pot, not one pot, and went straight from having about 140,000 to being out in 17th. But that's how it goes. I mean, with those limit tournaments, you just kind of have to get lucky throughout. You can't have like one little surge of running good and then you stop winning pots because as soon as you stop winning pots, you just are going to lose all your chips no matter what. So still a decent start to the World Series. We got 30, 40 more tournaments to go. So hopefully this will just be, uh, be the tip of the iceberg. All right, we scooped a nice little pot there at the end against Mike Leah. He's an important guy to beat because we got bets against him. Oh, I don't even know if he took himself. Never mind. But whatever. We uh, had Ace Ace Three Five. He had Ace King Deuce Four. The flop was Ace Eight Nine. He check raised me. I'm like, okay, I have three aces and a low draw, so I re-raised him. Turn as a queen. A little scary because he could have ten jack and you know raise me some kind of high wrap hand. But he didn't. He check called. River was the nine. Good card for me. Ace is full of nines, he called me with ace king. So, got about 84,000 playing, going into the last two levels of the night. Stakes are very high on day one. We've changed the structures in the limit events so that day one really means something, you know? You, uh, you're in jeopardy, you're playing pots to matter rather than wasting time. And then on day two, it slows to a halt because we switched to two hour limits. Uh, super excited, I'm really playing good. Like, I mean really good. This is probably, I don't know man, I'm just really focused. Like I've learned a lot just in the last, year just about how to think about the game and uh, break down certain things from both from no limit and mixed games and it's really helping to 
make even better decisions that are not just on autopilot. You know, for I've been playing poker 20 years, it's very, it'd be very easy for me to just kind of go through the motions. And I think there have been times in my life where I've kind of done that, where I just call or whatever, like, well, let's think through this. They never have the deuce five. They never have this. So I made some good value bets in spots too, or just folding, made some, every time I made a really tough fold, it's been correct and uh, super excited. Um, like I said, for me, this is a real championship event, a mixed game event, and I'm in the running. We got two more hours, like I said, and I'm pumped. <laughs> that Vegas stuff, man, <laughs> it works. Look how much energy I got, woo! Well, you're looking at a happy boy right now walking out of this room. Uh, we set an intention today of 200,000 or more in chips. I have, I have covered. I'm literally okay. I'm like, you can ask any one of the head people. I've been given, been given clearance for the entire series. <laughs> Almost got in trouble. <laughs> All right, anyway, back to what I was saying. He's trying to cut me off, right? I got clearance, yo. So our intention today, as I said, was 200K to end the day and we did better than that, 224,500. We're gonna be playing five and 500, 1,000, uh, 5,000, 10,000 tomorrow for two hours, because the levels double on day two. This, the structure's pretty quick on day one, right? So it's easy to build a stack, you know, that's, that's 4X uh, starting stack. And uh, we're, I don't know, about halfway through in terms of number of fields. So the average stack's a little over 100, maybe 110. So really good day. I mean, I played really good. Like really good. I'm very proud of myself, to be honest with you. And I know a lot of the study has been paying off a lot of just like thinking about the games differently and, you know, learning honestly from some of the younger players who think about the game differently and how can I incorporate what I'm learning from them and make myself better. Um, you know, it's actually helped me to read hands better too. Just thinking about, I guess the term sounds nerdy, but it's true. Just like ranges and how they apply to not just no limit hold them, but I can sort of apply that to these mixed games as well and then rule out some hands that the player is unlikely to have based on previous actions. Now that sounds maybe convoluted in another way of like saying what I've already done for most of my life but uh, I don't know I feel sharper I feel stronger I feel better in every format and I'm just super stoked for this World Series. This is a big opportunity right here. Omaha a lot of great players in there with big stacks but uh, we'll be fresh and ready tomorrow at 2 p.m. Another day in the life, yo. I'm excited. We're going we're to shave this thing. <laughs>